Hi, my name is Scott Hallam. I'm from Catskill, New York. And uh, during Woodstock 94, I was also from Catskill. Um, some friends of mine uh, went to school in Plattsburgh. We heard about the concert and we decided we were gonna go. Uh, we bought legit tickets and we heard all the rules about uh, you know no bringing food in. And uh, so we followed most of the rules and we, we went to the shuttle and uh, a friend of mine start, tried to sneak granola bars in to the, to the bus. And we went through the line and uh, the, the security guard checked the bags and he found the granola bars and was like, uh-oh, we spent $135 on these tickets. And they're not even gonna let us in. So they, they confiscated the granola bars and sent us on our way. So uh, my parents owned a little uh, grocery store in Palinville at the time. And uh, I had asked my dad to kind of have the weekend off to go to the concert. So he said, sure. So off I go, I'm in the bus, get to the show, and I got my tent and we find a spot in the field. It was early, it was, the field was wide open and uh, I get set up. And then the guys kind of, we all go around and try and, you know, look at different things going on. And I realized that I lost like the rain hood for the tent and I can't find it anywhere. And I'm getting aggravated about it. So we go, and I think we watch Jack All or whatever, and um, we, the crowd starts to fill in. And I'm like, okay, there's, what if it rains, I have no, t and I'm like, and then the crowd really starts to fill in, and really starts to fill in. And then we hear, like, the, the, the walls are, the fences are down. Their people are just flooding in. And it's just like, it's a, it's a wave. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a lot of people. And I'm still mad about the tent. And I'm like, you know what? I just got to a level of frustration. I was like, I'm going home. I lived right down the road. I'm like, I have no tent in case it rains. And so I start walking out, literally one person walking out through a, a sea of people coming in. And so, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. So it took forever to get out. So I go out, I'm out through the main gates and I see like a pickup truck pulls over and they're unloading kegs out of the pickup truck. And I'm like, Eight hours ago, they took our granola bars away, and now we're bringing kegs in. And I happened to know the guys, they were from Panelville, and I said, hey, can you give me a ride to the gas station up on top of the hill so I can call for a ride and go home? So they said, yeah, get in. So I get a ride to the gas station, and I call my mom. I'm like, mom, can you come get me? I'm at the gas station at the Quarryville Hill. So she comes and gets me, and I go home. And that was the end of day one. So I said to my dad, hey, I go, um, since, you know, I didn't go to the show. I, you know, I'm done. Can I still have the weekend off? He's like, no, there's a humongous concert going on. I need you. Okay, fine. So I go, and a lot of the talent, I believe, was at the Friar Tuck Inn. They had a bunch of people over there, and one of the chambermaids, the cleaning ladies, was a regular customer, and she came in, and she said, hey, she goes, do you want to use this? I go, what is that that you have? And she says, it's a, it's a backstage press pass for Woodstock. And she says, I'm going to go tomorrow, but I have to work tonight. I can't use it. But if you want, you can use it and bring it back for me. So I said, yeah, I will take it. So I got the rest of the day off and I went, she goes, go to Friar Tuck and take a shuttle bus. So we go to Friar Tuck. I go and um, I meet some people there. Um, so we're waiting for the shuttle, waiting for the shuttle. And of course, it's taking forever. So I meet this journalist from Seattle. I got talking to him. I didn't even know how we got talking, but uh, he says, uh, you know, I got a car, I could drive us down. So I said, okay, let's go. So we get in the car and we drive down and we get just outside, like right where I saw the guys unloading the beer kegs, we get just outside there and it's coarse gridlock. And um, I, can, I have the window rolled down and I can hear Moats Etheridge doing Janice. And I'm like, this is awesome. So. I look at the guy and there's, there's no way he's gonna find a spot to park this car. I'm like, so what do I owe this guy? Nothing really. So I just got out of the car. I said, thanks for the ride and ran in. So, and I didn't see him again. Um, so I take my pass and I go backstage and I'm like, this is a much better experience. So yeah, um, I go backstage and Cypress Hill is having a press conference. So I just wander up to the Cypress Hill press conference, grab myself a bottle of water. Said, this is outstanding. And I remember somebody asked uh, Cypress Hill, you know, what is it, what's your feelings on like, um, you know, Woodstock 94 being drug free? And he pulled out the biggest bag of pot that I've ever seen. And he's like, who says it's drug free? Um, so that was fun. And uh, so I got to talk to those guys, Cypress Hill guys afterwards. 
and just kind of hung around in the back. Uh, I watched Primus on the monitor. I watched like the whole uh, the whole uh, Nine Inch Nails insanity from the monitor. I'm like, well, I got to get back out there. This is cool. And then they say uh, Aerosmith is going to be giving a press conference in 15 minutes. I go, no way. So I go back to the press conference area, and there's there's camera there's, there's reporters from everywhere, all over the world, and the, they have lenses like this big, and I'm I'm literally in the front row of the reporters with one of those disposable cameras that you have to click and snap like this, and then you put so this guy's lens is this big, and then I'm like here like taking pictures of Steven Tyler, zick zick zick. Um, so yeah, there I was in the middle of the thing, and so you know, any questions? I raised my hand. Asked Steven Tyler, like, was this one of the highlights of your career? And here I'm talking to Steven Tyler. <laughs> Yesterday I was walking out through a sea of people. Um, so that was it. I went.